Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in Stardew Valley as a fairy? Well, now you don't have to. Day one started just like every other save file with me receiving my first parsnips, watching a little local news, and getting my mail for the day. My first task was to change my appearance with the magic mirror Haley sent me so I could look a little bit more like a fairy. There's a ton of customization options in this mod, so I highly recommend it if you like modding your games. And as usual, all the mods I use for this video will be in the description below. I started clearing out my farm, planted my first seeds, and made a chest for extra storage. I then grabbed some forageables on the way to Pierre's ripoff market, I mean general store, and used all the money I had to buy flower seeds. All the planting took a toll on my energy levels, so I chose to go to bed super early on the first day. The next morning, I watched some TV, watered my garden, and used my magical fairy chair to cheat my way into the Forgotten Woods. Did a little more foraging for extra cash, and then started introducing myself to the townsfolk. I sold the forageables I had, but kept a few for the spring bundles. Later, I went to the beach to meet with Willy and get my first fishing rod. I was tired again at that point, so I retreated to my fairy cave for a quick hot spring session to regain some strength. I want to point out how weird my arms look in these early videos because I hadn't quite figured out how to get the long sleeves mod to work, but I figured it out a few days in, so they'll look less ridiculous soon enough. That night, I reached level 1 foraging. It was rainy in the morning, so I didn't need to expend any energy watering my crops. I met Marnie, found my first geode, and accepted a fishing quest from the community task board. Next, I dug through some trash and met some more NPCs. Did a little fishing, visited the museum, and went back to clearing my farm. Then I drank a nasty pond scum crusted soda before I went to bed. The next day was more gardening, tree chopping, spa visits, and meeting townsfolk. I used all the wood I chopped to repair the bridge on the beach so I had an easy source for more forageables to make money in the early game. Made a quick trip to the bar and went to sleep before 9, unlocking level 2 foraging and the recipe for the survival burger. Marnie woke me up the next morning to deliver the most adorable stray cat. It took me a few minutes to decide a name for it, but I eventually landed on Big Boy. It fits. I got some junk mail from two scammers trying to sell me stuff, then I worked on my garden a little more. Next, I sorted through my task log and visited Willie in his shop to sell some forageables I got from the beach. Checked the price for a backpack upgrade, but decided to wait and buy some more crops instead. I did a little more dumpster diving and gave Sam some crusty soda from his own trash can, and then went back home to plant my seeds. After that, I visited the newly opened mine and got a couple bits of ore. Then I gave Linus and George some leaks I found on the ground. That night, I ended up getting super lucky and got visited by the crop fairy, which is pretty convenient considering the theme of the video. Overnight, I reached level 1 in farming, and the next morning Clint visited me to tell me about ore mining and smelting. I ended up getting a ton of crops early from the crop fairy, so I picked those and watered the rest. Then I used all the money I earned to buy the backpack upgrade and get an additional row of inventory space. Then I went back to the mines for a long session of mining, fighting, and filling my pockets with garbage to use later. I reached level 10 pretty quickly and got a pair of boots for armor. Then I visited the Adventurer's Guild to sell my old sneakers. After that, I got my reward from Lewis for defeating some slimes, and spent the rest of the evening filling my pockets with even more garbage to sell. You know, in hindsight, I'm not sure if I should call this video 100 Days as a Fairy or 100 Days as a Loot Goblin. On day 7, Big Boy worked up a gift onto my front doorstep. I'm not sure where he found a whole jade, but I appreciate the grind. I watered my crops and headed into town where I met Lewis and triggered the community center cutscene. Lewis immediately went full boomer on me and started yapping about how technology is evil and nobody wants to work anymore. I don't see you keeping up the community center, do I, Lewis? I accepted another task from the board and cracked open some geodes to get museum donations. Thankfully, I had a spare topaz to give Linus and he gave me some quick cash in return. I forgot to open up the community center, so I went back to do that, then went straight to mining for shiny things. I got my first sword on level 20 and practiced stabbing innocent people with it. All that stabbing got me to level 1 combat. The next morning, I got a letter from the wizard telling me to meet him at his tower to talk about the community center. My parents also wrote me and sent me $500 for some reason. Watered my crops and headed to the wizard's tower to breathe in these totally legal green fumes. Definitely worth the trip. After that, I did a little foraging and finished my first bundle, unlocking a couple more bundles around the community center.
sold all the seeds I got for my reward, and used that money to buy even more flowers. Then I popped back home to grab what I needed to finish another bundle and drop off even more stuff. I gave Caroline a flower and visited Clint again to upgrade one of my tools to copper. I decided to do the axe first because it would help me more on the farm. I donated some minerals to the museum and spent the rest of the night fishing on the beach. Once again, I was in bed before 9pm, just like in real life. Day 9 was a rainy day, so I picked the few crops that were ready and left the rest to be watered by the rain. I spent a little time foraging, made my first scarecrow, and did a few little chores to help with inventory space and bundles. Saw my first ever fairy weapon being sold at Gil's shop, but unfortunately it was too expensive for me. Then I worked on some more fishing bundles and used my extra energy to clear out more on my farm. The next morning I watered my cat, did a little foraging, and picked up my new copper axe. I gave out a few more gifts to the townsfolk to help raise their friendship levels, and donated some more geo treasures to the museum. I donated enough to get a reward of melon seeds, but I can't use them until summer, so I just tucked them away for later and started chopping more wood on my farm. I completely exhausted myself and had to limp home to go to bed, but I was able to reach level 3 foraging, so it was worth it. Day 11, I checked my mail and got a letter from Robin asking me to find her favorite axe. I'm not really sure how you could just set your axe down and go home without knowing at least a general idea of where you were chopping wood, but I like Robin, so I'll be nice and find it for her. I harvested and gifted more flowers from my garden, then I got the cutscene for the locked sewer gate. That development will be much more important later on. I gave Linus a gift on my way back to the mines, but I got really unlucky and was chased out by swarms of bugs multiple times. I ended up leaving and going home to sleep for the night. Harvested more flowers in the morning and got a letter from the hat mouse telling me to visit his shop. On my way to visit him, I snagged Robin's lost axe and some delicious sewer onions. I dropped off a fish for another bundle, then I went back to Clint's to get him to upgrade my pickaxe since I was doing so well money-wise. The beach had an insane amount of forageables, so I snagged those and sold them to Willie for a hefty profit. I also tried giving Elliot a flower as a gift, but apparently the man hates daffodils. Really reconsidering liking him as a character after that one. After that, I gave Robin her axe, sold a knife I found in the mines, and spent the rest of my day chopping more wood. I'm going to use it all for something important, I promise. Next morning was the same old, same old, watering crops and felling trees before the spring festival started in town. Spent nearly every penny I had on strawberries, one because they fit the vibe, and two because I was going to make buco bucks with them later. I then used my super speed to cheat, I mean compete, in the egg hunt. Those little brats didn't know what hit them, and I ended up gathering a whopping 15 eggs and swiping the straw hat prize right out from under their noses. That night, I also leveled up my farming and foraging skills. Day 14 was another rainy day. I picked my flowers, got the mail, and started planting a stupid amount of strawberries. I then retrieved my copper pickaxe from Clint, and spent the next couple of hours fishing to make some quick money at Willie's. I checked the traveling cart and saw that they had a rare seed, so I picked that up, then I gave out a few flowers around town and went to sleep for the day. Day 15 is the start of salmonberry season, so I wandered around after doing my morning gardening to pick up a bunch of berries and chopped some more wood on my way to visit the hat mouse to check his stock. I gave out some more flowers around town and headed to the mines. I got unlucky again and struggled with a few infested floors, so I didn't get super far, but progress is progress. I got to sleep a little before midnight and reached combat level 2. The next day, I just chopped some wood, gave out more flowers, plus a quartz for a community task, then went straight to bed. Nothing really important on that one.
Day 17, I tended to my strawberries and headed to Robin's to check what I needed for a chicken coop. Then I spent $2,000 on the most expensive calendar in the entire world. After that, I spent most of the day in the mines killing grubs and trying to make it further down towards the bottom. I sold all the excess junk I got in the mines at the Adventurer's Guild, then I went to sleep. The next morning, I watered my crops, then placed the window that I accidentally misclicked and bought, plus my expensive calendar. I gave out some gifts and went to Clint's to upgrade a tool, but I realized I was too broke, so I just had him process some geodes instead. Did a little foraging on the beach and used that money to get a better fishing rod since I hate the bamboo pole with a passion. After that, I went to Pierre's and got the cutscene where the Walmart man shows up at the local business and gives everyone a 50% off coupon just to steal his customers. I don't like Pierre, but I don't have any clue why he didn't just punch Morris in the face right then and there. My progress with the townsfolk was really slow going, but I at least got one heart with Caroline, which is halfway there to getting the green tea recipe. I did some fishing with my new rod and dropped off my fish to the community center. Then I bought Pam a beer for her birthday so I could get brownie points with her and increase her heart levels quicker. I spent the rest of my night chopping wood and went to sleep with level 3 fishing. The beer I gave Pam seemed to make her really happy, so the next morning I got her recipe for cheesy cauliflower in the mail plus a request for a raw cauliflower from Jody. I checked the traveling cart and got this weird little wallflower guy for some reason. After that, I accepted a fishing task and brought Jody her cauliflower to make for dinner. I spent a couple hours fishing at the beach to get Pierre's fish and delivered it to him right away. Then I went to sleep before 4 p.m. Day 20, I chopped more wood and enabled the town alcoholics again. Then I went to sleep by 4. Honestly, if I was chopping wood and running errands all day in real life, I would probably go to bed by 4 too. The next day was my first strawberry harvest and my first taste of getting some good money from my farm. I chopped more wood, gave out some more flowers, checked the traveling cart, and did some foraging in the woods below Marnie's farm. The wizard also posted a task on the bulletin board, so I accepted that and went to bed early again. Demetrius showed up at my house in the morning and offered to set up my fairy cave to get either mushrooms or fruit bats, and I chose bats thinking it would help me complete bundles faster. Little did I know that because my cave was modded, it cancelled out the fruit spawn rate for the entire playthrough, essentially making the cave useless. I think I maybe got one piece of fruit the entire year. I harvested the second half of my strawberries that grew a day later than the first batch, then rested in my cave hot springs to fully refill my energy bar. But then I finally had enough money to build my first chicken coop, so I got Robin started on that right away. Then I gave away some more flowers and dropped off some supplies for the bundles. That last flower finally gave me enough friendship points to get to two hearts with Caroline, and I was able to get into her greenhouse and chill out with her over a cup of homegrown green tea. This is honestly one of my favorite cutscenes in the game, and I'm sad that I didn't know about it until a few years after I started playing. After that little break, I sold some forageables and fished for the largemouth bass the wizard wanted and got 300 smackaroos for it. That night I had to choose between the rancher profession and the tiller profession and I chose rancher. The next day was pretty boring and quick with me just gardening, chopping wood, and foraging in the woods. You know the drill. Same deal on day 24, but after my chores, I headed to the spring festival in the woods. I bought some souvenirs and asked Shane to be my dance partner, but alas, I hadn't given him enough beer to make him consider dancing with me, so I had to sit on the sidelines all alone. I definitely cried myself to sleep that night. The next morning, I got myself together enough to harvest and sell some strawberries. Then I visited Marnie to chat a little and try to get her friendship level up faster. I accepted a task to get copper from the mines, and I was able to gather up all the sap that I got from chopping trees every day to complete the sticky bundle with a whopping 500 units of sap. I got a charcoal kiln for all that work, which I feel is a total ripoff, so I headed to the mines to take out my frustration on the poor innocent monsters on level 30. I reached level 40 and got a mini slingshot, 
Then I got beat up really bad by a little slime, which is pretty embarrassing. I ran out of energy, so I went to sleep by 6 that night. Day 26 was Pierre's birthday, but I hate him, so I ignored that and went right to harvesting my strawberries and chopping down more trees. I used that wood to build a hay silo for my future chickens. Then I bought some customization tools from Robin to decorate my house. I broke open some more geodes and donated to the museum, and I got an open geode decoration as a reward. Next I did a little foraging before I remembered that I had to actually talk to Clint to complete his task and get paid for it. I also remembered it was the end of the month, so I snuck into Caroline's greenhouse and stole her ripe green tea leaves before dropping off more bundle stuff and buying my first chicken from Marnie. I used my paint bucket tool to turn the chicken coop and my house into gingerbread buildings to fit the whole magical fairy aesthetic, and set up some fences to keep the chickens from running wild. I had to fight my cat to the death from my bed that night, but I was able to get to sleep and reach level 6 foraging. Day 27 was Emily's birthday and my chicken's first day on the farm. I delivered a single green bean to Demetrius for some reason, but it's cool because I got 120 bucks for it. Then I went mining for the rest of the day and got a full-sized magnet ring. I dropped off bundle supplies and spent the rest of the night giving out gifts at the bar to buy people's love. That night I caught Linus digging in the trash cans, but I ain't no snitch, so it was no big deal. And when I went to sleep, I reached level 3 in mining and combat. It's the last day of the season, and I had no strawberries to pick, so I tended to my chicken and processed some geodes. I have half the dwarf scrolls I need to unlock dwarven language, and I got a few rewards for donating to the museum. Went back to the mines at 11am, and spent the next 6 hours fighting dust sprites and collecting more loot. Then I checked the traveling cart, and spent way too much money on a single coffee bean, so I could have a head start on growing coffee beans in the summer. I collected a reward from the wizard for slaying monsters, then collected my last sewer onions for the year and headed to bed. I'm really gonna miss those sewer onions. It's the first day of summer, which means it's going to be very busy. I spent a ton of money on summer crops and spent my whole morning planting and watering them. Then I spent the rest of the day in the mines with a short break to say hi to bubs and gather hay before I went to bed. The next morning was boring farm chores as usual. I gave Haley a gift, only for her to turn around and insult me, which was uncalled for, but I think I handled it pretty gracefully. I donated to the museum and started on the summer fishing for bundles, then spent some time talking to Willie about fish juices while he talked cryptically about his secret project in the back. It's just a boat, Willie. You're out here talking like you've got bodies back there. I did some more fishing, gave Elliot a flounder because he likes those for some reason, and found out that Pierre was selling my spoiled crops to people for full price. Classic Pierre. I gave out some more gifts, got insulted by Shane again, and dropped off my bundle fish and a single winter berry I found in the caves. Then I set up some preserve jars and started making fresh strawberry jam before bed. Big Boy brought me a whole fish in the morning, which made me very proud, and I got the creepiest letter from the mayor about finding his missing boxers. Don't you have any dignity, Lewis? Anyway, I did my normal chores and went to town to hand out some presents. I kept a little stockpile of spring flowers to give out as gifts, so I used those in addition to the two summer flowers you can forage. I processed some geodes at Clint's, donated to the museum, and got a free painting to display in my house. Did a little fishing and was really tempted to crush Alex's dreams of becoming a pro athlete, but I'm trying to be nice in this save, so I told him to work hard and achieve his dreams. I did a little more fishing after that and dropped off even more bundle stuff. Before bed, I was able to sell a good amount of fish and decorate my house a little bit. The 4th of summer is Jazz's birthday. I took care of my chicken and I got my first chicken egg of the year. Then I went to the beach to try and get some rainy day specific fish for the bundles. I underestimated how much money it was to upgrade one of my tools to iron, and then I completed another bundle, so it made me feel a little better. Also, I got a ton of summer seeds from it. I unlocked more bundles to complete and finished the ocean fishing bundle next. Then I gave out some more flowers and used the summer seeds to make a bunch of tea saplings. Selling the saplings themselves is a huge money maker in the early game. Well, at least before 1.6. That night, I leveled up fishing and chose the fisherman perk. The next morning, I harvested my wheat crops and gave my pickaxe to Clint to upgrade into iron. I had enough money left over for my tea plants to buy the $5,000 bundle, which gave me some fertilizer as a reward. 
Then I bought some blueberry seeds and used those to fill in the gaps the wheat left behind. My first batch of jam was done, so I popped in another batch. Then I chopped down some more trees and went to sleep. Day six of summer was watering crops, giving gifts, and telling Haley that I spend my time snooping around in her room when she asks what I do all day. Penny was being an awkward queen as usual. I did a little fishing, got whiplash from Shane's attitude, and bought some ice cream from the stand outside the museum before dropping off my donations. In the morning, I learned how to make baked fish from the cooking channel. Then I did my morning chores and picked up my new steel pickaxe. I was able to complete a few more bundles at the community center. Then I went back to the mines to test out the new pickaxe. It was now strong enough to break the rock that separated the dwarf from the cave entrance, but I didn't have all the dwarf scrolls yet, so I couldn't talk to him in his native language. Day 36, I made some jam and went a little crazy using my new pickaxe to clear boulders on my farm. Then I gave away some flowers and processed geodes again. I chugged some pumpkin soup and spent the next few hours in the mines with the power of god and vegetables on my side. It was a lucky day, so I got a diamond and killed a rainbow slime. The reward for reaching level 60 was the same sort I already had, so I went to sleep a little bummed that night. Day 37 was normal chicken chores and filling bundles with flowers I either grew or found in the woods. Then I went straight back to the mines and got some stuff to sell to the Adventurers Guild. I enabled the town alcoholics again and went to sleep early. The 10th day of summer is Maru's birthday, so I tried to give her a strawberry because it's one of our favorite things. But unfortunately, it was raining all day and she spent the day in her room, so I couldn't get to her. Instead, I went back to Clint's for more geodes and to upgrade my axe to steel. I'm making at least 1000 G per day, doing little stuff to make money, so I was able to afford it easily. Gave Shane some peppers and got some fiddlehead ferns from the secret woods. Then I did my rounds at the bar and gave people gifts. It's a good thing I didn't give Shane a beer today because when I showed up at Marnie's, I found him blacked out on his floor from drinking too much again. But like a heartless psychopath, I ignored his problems and bribed Marnie to let me into her room where I could steal Lewis's boxers and use them for blackmail and torture. I slept like a baby that night. It was the day of the luau and Emily made a surprise visit, which made me very happy. I did my morning farm chores and tried to get into the clinic, but Harvey is a lazy and terrible doctor with awful hours of operation, so I headed to the beach instead. I used a gold star pepper in the soup, which in real life I think would make an amazing addition to a big pot of stew, but apparently the governor is a loser with no taste and he said the soup was just okay. I was pretty offended, but at least I made Lewis look bad, so it was worth it, I guess. It's day 40 and we're nearly halfway through the year. I tended my garden and checked the traveling cart for goodies, gave out some gifts, and got a ton of forageables from the beach which netted me a good chunk of pocket change. Spent some time fishing, gave Elliot his flounder, and ended up finding a ton of treasure in the ocean, including some stuff for the bundles. I made some tea saplings for extra cash, and went to sleep with level 6 fishing. Day 41, I harvested some melons, picked up my new steel axe, then went to Robin's to buy an upgrade for my chicken coop. I gave Gus some berries he requested and made a bunch more tea saplings to sell. With my brand new axe, I was able to finally stop cheating my way into the secret woods and actually remove the log that was blocking the path. I caught my first wood skip and sold an old ring to Marlin before I went fishing in the underground lakes in the mines. That was two more rare bundle fish down, only one to go. In the morning, I learned how to make pancakes. Also, it was Bloop Day, which is by far my favorite day in any Stardew Valley playthrough. Also, the mayor sent me some money in the mail, which, now that I think about it, is highly illegal. Pam decided she wasn't drunk enough every day and needed a new kind of beer to drink. You're gonna have to wait a while on that one, Pam. I haven't started my booming alcohol industry yet. Then spent some time fishing in the mountain lakes above and below ground. I was able to fish up a pike and finish another bundle, then I handed out more flowers and completed a quick side quest for Pierre. I spent some of my accumulating wealth on an apple tree and a pomegranate tree, then donated some more stuff to the museum. I got a big blue teddy bear and displayed it in the section of the library that I always see the kids hanging out in. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Spent the rest of the night chopping down trees and went to sleep. 
It was halfway through summer and I finally got my first thunderstorm. I worked through the thunder and lightning as if it wasn't there and went to Marnie's to buy my first ducks. In theme with my chicken bubs, I named them Wubs and Tubs. I made a bunch more tea saplings and went mining for a while, reaching level 70 and receiving the full size slingshot as a reward. I also completed the monster loot bundle. Day 44 and there wasn't much to do on the farm, so I went to the museum and handed out some gifts and donations. I went to Walmart, I mean Jojo Mart, and bought some cool wallpaper, and got a crab from the mines to finish off the crab pot bundle without making a single crab pot. I also got some money from a Clint side quest and totally forgot that I already gave Shane a pepper that day, so I couldn't feed his alcoholism. Pam was cool with the secondhand beer though. Speaking of beer, I got the cutscene with Shane where he talks about his life being wasted potential. Then we, ironically, both get wasted on the dock and stumble home in a drunken stupor. Drunk as I was, I was still able to put up some wallpaper, which is honestly extremely impressive. The 17th of summer is Sam's birthday, and also a pretty good harvest day for me. I gave out some gifts, and got a ton of rewards from the museum, including ancient seeds. I actually remembered to give Sam a can of coke for his birthday gift, and got the cutscene with Emily where you sneak into her dream and harass her while she's trying to meditate. I had some sunflowers, so I gave one to Haley since it's her favorite thing, and collected a little bug sword from Gil as a reward for killing so many grubs. It sucks as a sword, so I switched to the bone sword I just got and used that to fight my way down to level 80. Sold some extra swords I had lying around and went to sleep at 9. I chose the geologist profession for level 5 mining, which I'll come to regret pretty soon afterwards. Miner is definitely the way to go in hindsight. The next day was bloob day again! It was raining too, so I didn't have to water anything, and I collected some junk from my crab pots in the pond by my house. The ducks were growing up nicely, so I left them to go forage in the secret woods and spent more time chopping wood and making tea saplings. I completed a task for the wizard and headed back home to go to bed early. The 19th of summer is Demetrius's birthday, but I think I might have fully forgotten that immediately after I saw it. I did my chores and went to the mines for the day. I almost died on an infested floor, but I ate a purple mushroom I found, so that saved me. I got a cool new sword on level 90 and sold some extra monster loot to Marlin. That night I got to level 7 farming, which unlocked a few new gadgets for later, and level 5 combat. The next morning, Demetrius sent me a request for a locally grown melon, and being a magical fairy, I had anticipated such a request and set aside a melon for him earlier in the week. Yes, it's definitely my fairy powers, and not just me having played this game through like five times already. And you know what? I'm playing through it again on 1.6. You can't stop me. I got my first duck eggs, made some more tea saplings for profit, and accepted a few side quests from the townsfolk. Day 49, I made my first bee house to start getting some honey, and I used the money I saved up to buy the last few bank bundles and fully complete the treasury room. Then I went to the beach and got trauma dumped on by Sam talking about his dad in the military. I pretended not to hear him and went about my business giving raw fish to Elliot and making that good good beach money. I got some more stuff to donate to the museum, and was rewarded with a few trinkets to litter around the place. Then I gave Shane another single chili pepper and bought another rare seed from the traveling cart. The wizard got his bi-weekly gift, and I went to bed before 6. The Junimos also spent all night repairing the bus with all the money I funneled into their little bank accounts. Thanks, Junimos. It's finally day 50. You'd think that's halfway to 100 days, right? Wrong! Because there are actually 112 days in a year of Stardew Valley, so the real halfway point will be 6 days from now. Also, it's Bloob Day again. Yippee! I spent some time in the secret woods gave the wizard more gifts, dropped off some ferns for a bundle, and headed to the Calico Desert for the first time. Sandy was really excited to meet me. I wish you could marry her without mods. She's a really fun character, and she's also friends with Emily, which automatically makes me like her more. I got a sandfish to complete the rare fish bundle, and also completed the medicine bundle while I was there. I gave Shane some pizza to help soak up all that booze he drinks, and handed out more gifts to the rest of the bar patrons. I tried to give Leah her salad, but it was too late by then, so I just went home. 
Day 51, I did some chores and visited Linus while we huddled in his tent trying not to get rained on. I got super unlucky in the mines and ended up passing out, but Clint dragged my half-dead body up the ladder so I barely survived. I didn't lose too much stuff either, which is great. I did a few side quests and gave out free food to some townsfolk. Then I found Shane passed out on the cliffside, threatening to roll off and kill himself. I could make some jokes about this scene, but it's actually one of my favorites in the game because it's not afraid to show the nasty reality of alcoholism and suicide. Good on you, Concerned Ape, for showing something like this. The next morning, Shane showed up at my house and thanked me for talking him down from the ledge. A new baby chick hatched overnight too, so I like to think that after he thanked me, I showed him the new baby and let him pet it because he likes animals so much. Then I used a free warp totem I got and made a quick trip to the beach for foraging. I bought a new iridium rod and some fish stew and spent the rest of the day peacefully fishing on the beach, making sure to take a break to bring Elliot a flounder. That night I reached level 7 fishing and unlocked some new bobbers. Day 53 was farm chores and cleaning a thawed frozen pizza from Shane out of my mailbox. George asked if I could bring him a pepper to rub on his knee, which interestingly enough actually has some roots in reality since capsaicin can be used to help with pain relief if you apply it to unbroken skin. No open wounds, just unbroken skin. I watched Sam and Sebastian play music for a while, then I gave Sam the dirty mail pizza I got from Shane but didn't tell him where I got it from. I gave away some flowers, fought my way through the mines, and got a star drop from reaching level 100. The taste reminded me of glitter. I went to sleep and leveled up in combat and mining. We're close to the end of summer, which means summer storms, and yet another bloop day. I got pretty beat up in the mines, so I warped over to the beach and spent some time fishing and decompressing from my stressful day. The next morning, I got a fresh fish from Big Boy and got my museum donation back from Marlin's Retrieval Service. Robin gave me a good quote for a house expansion, so I bought that. Then I processed more geodes at Clint's and donated my stuff. I completed another bundle and got a free furnace, which meant that the boiler room was fully completed. The Junimos were very happy about that one. I gave out some more gifts and chopped some wood for the rest of the day, and the Junimos fixed up the minecarts overnight. We're finally to the halfway point to the video. How are you feeling? Maybe stretch a little, take a drink of water? All done? Great, let's keep it going. I gave out some gifts and bought some grass for my chickens so they would be a little happier in their pen. Apparently grass doesn't spread unless it's on dirt though, so it was pretty much a waste of money and resources. Made some sprinklers and did my rounds at the bar to buy people's love and fished until it was time to go to the Moonlight Jelly Festival. I bought some souvenirs and watched the event from the docks. The day ended peacefully, and summer was finally over. Day one of fall is another busy day because I have to get the whole garden set up for a new season. I got some cooking recipes from friends in the mail and got right to work. It was nearly 3 p.m. by the time I was done planting everything, and I went around town giving out gifts and fishing for the fall bundle fish until night fell. Day 58 came with a new house upgrade. I moved my furniture around a little bit for convenience and headed outside to find a dead fish in my mailbox. I think Linus may be threatening me. Lewis and Robin also unveiled the new community task board in town, and Lewis tried to take all the credit for it, as usual, even though Robin did all the work. He's the worst mayor ever, and I wish we could assassinate him and give Robin his title. Planted even more crops, tended my coop, and spent more time giving out gifts. I tried giving the kids some eggs because I thought they were universal-like, but they hated them. Then Jazz flat out insulted me. What a waste of fresh eggs. 
I donated an old ring to the museum and got started on Robin's wood chopping request since it's one of the only things I'm really good at. I harassed Lewis by digging through his trash and worked on more bundle stuff. The rest of the day I spent chopping wood and making fresh bloop jam. The amaranth I just planted was going to come in handy because Marnie sent me a request for a bunch of it. I desperately tried to spread grass in the chicken pen and spent most of my day chopping trees and foraging on the farm. I stopped by the bar for a nice plate of spaghetti and did some night fishing on the beach. I just know the spaghetti Gus makes is a million times better than mine. He seems like the type of guy to can his own tomato sauce every year. Also, I got level 8 in foraging. Day 60, I got another gift from Big Boy and got to name the new duckling that hatched overnight. His name will be Chubbs. Surprise, surprise, I chopped more wood after that. I got the 1,000 pieces I needed and Robin sent me a cool $2,500 for all my hard work. And I used some of that money in her shop to buy my first barn. After that, I got the infamous Penny cutscene where she throws a tantrum because you don't tell her she's totally fine being a filthy ableist to George. Between that and her getting angry at you if you say you're not interested in having kids, she's got some serious issues to deal with. I dropped off some bundle stuff and bought groceries from Pierre, then spent more time fishing. I got the tiger trout I needed to finish another bundle and got some bait as a reward. Then I used the rice I bought to make a bunch of sushi for snacks. Fall day five is Elliot's birthday. I got a new blueprint from Robin in the mail and did my daily farm chores, including pickling some of my fresh vegetables. I finished the fall foraging bundle and used the seeds I got to make more tea saplings. I planted some cranberries in my garden and did a side quest for Gus, then spent some time fishing at the beach and selling what I caught to Willie. I gave out some gifts on my way to the mines and I reached level 110, receiving a cool new sword as a reward. Big Boy brought me a present the next morning and I almost stepped in little bits of fish guts, which is a fantastic way to wake up. I harvested some wheat, fed my ducks, and collected the one and only piece of fruit I'll ever get out of this stupid little cave. I went back to the mines to continue my journey to the bottom, but didn't get very far before I turned back. Day 63 I did more chores, but then I set up a bunch of tappers on the trees near my house so I could start collecting saps for future projects. I had Robin upgrade my barn, process some geodes for donation, and bought a few recipes from Gus. I gave out more presents around town and checked the traveling cart for anything important before heading to bed and finally unlocking kegs. Day 64, Big Boy stole an entire plate of food from someone and left it at my doorstep. Linus sent me a quest to collect his lost berry basket, and I harvested my first cranberries. Cranberry day isn't nearly as fun as bloob day, but I'll take what I can get. Found Linus's basket and returned it right away. Then I had a nice snack and started making kegs and clearing out a space for my alcohol distillery. Then I dropped off a few bundle items and went to bed. The next morning, I got a letter telling me about the Stardew Valley Fair, which is super exciting because I have special plans for that day. I brewed some more beer, did farm chores, and when I went to Marnie's, I caught Lewis walking right out of her room like a creep. Pretended not to notice how weird that was, so I ignored it and did my usual round of presents, starting with the wizard. I accepted a fishing quest from the board and got started on that right away. Then I spent the rest of my evening publicly shaming Marnie and Lewis for being perverts before giving Marnie the amaranth she asked for. In the morning, Marnie visited my farm to give me hush money. I mean, to see how everything was coming along. Apparently we're good friends now, so she sent me a new recipe and asked me for a cave carrot to give to her goats. I harvested some alcohol and jams and went foraging in the secret woods for a while. I was able to give Marnie her cave carrot right away and also bought some heaters for my farm animals. Pam finally got her pale ale like she requested and I made sure she drank the whole thing before she got behind the wheel. Then I went mining and reached level 120 and the bottom of the mines, unlocking the key to the skull caverns. After that, I gave out some gifts and bundle items before bed. Day 11 of fall is Jody's birthday, which I also immediately forgot about. I harvested some veggies and eggs and dropped off almost all the items I needed for the fall crops bundle. I got some good money from the aquatic overpopulation task. Then I dropped off museum stuff and got two new rewards. When I went to bed, I reached level eight fishing skill.
In the morning, I got a letter from Demetrius giving me the blueprints for the farm computer. Then I harvested a bunch of cranberries and bought a truffle from the traveling cart. With that truffle, I was able to finish the chef's bundle and I got a cake as a reward. I processed some geodes, gave the cake away to Elliot as gift, and bought the final backpack upgrade from Pierre. I bought a goat from Marnie and fished up some salmon for Willie. Then I did my rounds at the bar before I went to sleep for the night. Fall 13 is Abigail's birthday and another harvesting day. I fed my ducks, visited the mines, and traveled to the desert to give Sandy a gift. I used the skeleton key to open up the caverns, but I didn't spend too much time in there. I went back home to fish some more and finished up another bundle. I decorated my house again and slept through the night while the Junimos worked on opening up the glittering cave. On day 70, Big Boy stole a pomegranate from my tree and left it at my doorstep. I got a letter from Mr. Chi about reaching level 25 in the Skull Caverns, and I harvested my first pumpkins and tree fruits. A new duckling hatched overnight, so I named him Gubs. I started fermenting some cranberry wine and dropped off a pumpkin to finish the fall crops bundle and got a free bee house. I tried to grow some more grass in the chicken pen because I still didn't know it doesn't spread unless it's on dirt. I then realized that I completely forgot about the goats I bought two days ago, and they've been sitting in the barn miserable with no food. It's a good thing they're just pixels, but I did feel pretty guilty about it. Willie showed me how to panhandle or something like that, and then I moved the barn so there wouldn't be a big stump blocking the door. I headed back to the desert to give Sandy a flower, then spent the rest of the night in the caverns and reached level 7 in mining. The next day was Sandy's birthday, which means I have to drive back to the desert to give her a third gift this week. Mayor Lewis wrote me to remind me of the Grange display, as if I didn't already have devious plans for it. Then I did some farm chores and headed out to the desert. I didn't feel like mining in the caverns, so I went right back home and processed some geodes for the museum. I picked up a new community task and did some beach foraging, then went to sleep. The 16th was the day of the Stardew Valley Fair. I did my basic farm chores like gardening and taking care of the animals, then headed to the fair to win some prizes. I set up the most beautiful Grange display and showed it off to all the townsfolk, then waited patiently for Lewis to tally up my score. He seemed to be really impressed with my display and gave me 750 points for it. I spent the rest of my day gambling for more prize tokens, and eventually made enough to buy everything I wanted, including another star drop. So that means I spent all day blackmailing, gambling, and getting high. I love this game. That night, I got visited by another crop fairy. I was able to harvest a ton of crops in the morning thanks to the crop fairy, then spent some time taking care of the animals and foraging for mushrooms in the secret woods. I gave the wizard a gift and reached three hearts with him, then I finished another few bundles and got a heater in a jam jar. I also visited the old statue in the woods and gave it a sweet gem berry, which gave me my third star drop. I went to the desert to give Sandy a gift and completely forgot I already gave her three this week, which was super embarrassing. And I spent some more time in the caverns getting beat up by slimes and flying dragons. I nearly died and went back home with a single health point. That night, I reached level 9 farming. Fall 18 is Marnie's birthday, so I harvested my crops and went to her shop to threaten her because she's never at her counter. I spent the rest of the day mining and headed to sleep with level 7 combat skill. Day 75, Pam sent me some batteries in the mail. 
I harvested some wheat from my garden, and I started my first batch of corn juice. My animals were doing good, and my goats were all grown up, so I bought a milk pail from Marnie to get some goat milk from them. I made a cheese press and fixed up their fence, then spent the rest of the day in the lower levels of the mines, killing bugs and gathering copper. Day 76, my cat brought me some fresh seaweed all the way from the beach, so I chucked that in the fridge and did my morning chores. I love the dynamic lighting mod in the fall and winter because when you wake up, it's still dark out, just like in real life. I dropped off all the bug bits I collected at Willy's and got $3,000 for it. Then I processed some geodes for the museum and got super lucky with six whole iridium ore pieces. I got a new vase from the curator, gave Harvey some coffee, and upgraded my pickaxe to gold at Clint's. I spent an embarrassing amount of time and energy fighting low-level monsters and skull caverns before I gave up on reloading the floors and went back to the valley to schmooze the wizard and give him gifts. I remembered that I needed batteries for the locked box in the tunnel, so I used the ones Pam gave me. But it told me I needed a rainbow shell from Summer, so that's as far as I was going to get in that quest. I dropped off some booze at the community center, smelted my first iridium bar, and went to sleep. 21st of fall is Robin's birthday, and the day I learned to cook glazed yams. Not sure why the yams need so much false confidence instilled in them, but I'll do my best. Nobody make fun of me for that joke. I'm technically Gen Z, and I want to use the young people slang. Anyway, I tore down the old rickety fences by my animals and replaced them. Then I went to Marnie's and saw her making fun of the suicidally depressed alcoholic for being in a good mood for once. Are you trying to push him over the edge, Marnie? What's wrong with you? Haley was also being a brat today and complaining that she had to do a single chore like a teenager. Sam got in trouble for breaking a single egg because his mom is seriously high strung, and Willie's just living his best life fishing with a giant pile of living bug meat. I did a little fishing in the underground lakes and went to sleep. In the morning I gathered up a bunch of crops and accepted a task to give Penny a fish. I gave Caroline a fresh pumpkin to give to her daughter, and stole some green tea leaves from her greenhouse. Then I accepted the prismatic slime quest, and hung out with Elliot for a while in his beach cabin. I did some beach activities like foraging, fishing, and setting crab pots. Then I headed to Clint's again to pick up my tools and process some geodes. If you've watched my pizza playthrough, you'll see that my inability to tell the difference between a sardine and an anchovy strikes again, and I upset Penny by giving her the wrong fish. I gave up on fishing for the day and instead gave Linus a gift and headed back to the desert to visit Sandy and attempt to get some loot from the caverns. I ended up getting swarmed by dragons and died. Thankfully, Dr. Harvey did some emergency surgery to put my organs back in place, but I lost a few good items in the process. Honestly, the sword was pretty garbage for the cavern, so it wasn't too big of a loss. I made some soothing green tea and went to bed. In the morning, I scraped more pizza out of my mailbox and started a big batch of cranberry wine. I tended to the animals as usual and went around town giving out gifts. Haley told me I smelled like dirt and I threatened her with an axe. Then I finished up another set of bundles and got a free keg. I dealt with my crab pots at the beach, saw my first train, and gave Linus a gift before making my rounds at the bar. Someone apparently spray painted his tent overnight, which means that someone is going to die when I find out who did it. While I slept, the Junimos fixed up my greenhouse, including giving it full plumbing. They're very talented. The 24th is George's birthday, but I don't have any leaks to give him. Pierre is sending me gossip letters because he can't mind his own business, but I ignored him and spent the morning doing my usual farm chores and making fresh coffee for the day. A meteorite landed overnight and I cracked it open for some iridium ore. Then I got the cutscene where Emily says hi to her bird friends and talks to an injured parrot about being different from the others. Emily is just like me for real, and my headcanon is that she's 100% autistic, just like I am, so I love the scene and I eat it up every time. I gave out some gifts around town, tended my crab pots, and I went to the mines to look for the prismatic slime. I bought my first fairy weapon from Gil and tried it on the lower levels of the mines. It's a really cool weapon, but not powerful enough for higher level monsters considering it's so expensive. I ended up dying in the regular mines, which never happens to me, so I really need to work on getting a better weapon quick. The next day I got my Omni Geodes back in the mail, 
and tended to my animals. I made lots of mayonnaise, but couldn't drink any of it because I was playing 1.5. I spent the day desperately searching for the prismatic slime, but ended up getting beat up again and left early to go hang out with Linus. He taught me how to make wild bait, which is pretty cool. Day 82 was boring farm chores as usual and starting a new batch of alcohol. I collected some crab pot loot and headed to the mines again for a prismatic slime. It really didn't want to spawn for me, so I went to bed without finding it yet again. At least I leveled up my foraging overnight. 27th is the day of harvest fest, which means I need to stay awake all day until 10 p.m. to make it to the event. I killed time in the mines, found no prismatic slime yet again, and headed to the festival. I absolutely crushed the hedge maze and got the golden pumpkin reward. It's a universally loved gift, but I'm greedy, so I sold it for big money instead. And all that mining got me to level 8 overnight. Day 84, Evelyn proved that she's clearly a superhuman because she trudged all the way to my farm in the dark and cold just to give me a garden pot. We stan Evelyn in this household. I harvested some crops and continued building my backyard moonshine empire. Then I checked out my new greenhouse for the first time. I found a cool mod that expands it to include a big tree area. The greenhouse itself is gorgeous, so I highly recommend this mod once it gets ported over to 1.6. Processed some more geodes at Clint's and spent a bunch of time planting seeds and setting up my greenhouse for some passive income like the finance bros are always yelling at me to do. I gave out some gifts at the bar and went to sleep for the night. It's finally the first day of winter, which means no more gardening for me. I saw a shadow creature in the snow and chased him down to snatch the magnifying glass he found away from him like some heartless monster. Poor guy got bullied for no reason. Humans are clearly very racist in this town. I took a task from the board and spent the day in the mines looking for root vegetables. I finished up the winter foraging bundle and the Junimos celebrated another finished room. Then I did a little night fishing and went to sleep with level 8 combat from beating up that poor shadow creature. Also, the Junimos repaired a whole bridge in a few hours. <laughs> The next morning, I got some stolen ginger from my cat and some mail from Robin and Willie. I tried to cheat and make some ginger seeds, but they don't actually exist, so that didn't work. Then I took care of my animals and made a ton of tea saplings to actually plant in my greenhouse instead of just selling them. I spent nearly every penny I had on fruit trees and filled up the tree section of the greenhouse with them. Then I visited Sandy again and tried out the Skull Caverns only to die horribly like I do every single time. Having a strong weapon really is the only way to survive down there. I lost a bunch of stuff and went to sleep crying. The third of winter is Linus's birthday, which I'm determined to actually pay attention to. Whoops, I mean I forgot it, as usual. I took care of my animals and ignored the fact that my goats are apparently transracial now. Then I went to the quarry for the first time and stocked up on gems and ore. I dropped off some geode stuff at the museum and started filling up Gus's fridge with fresh eggs from my farm. The crab pots were full, so I collected those, then spent the rest of the day giving out gifts and finishing up side quests. I finished another bundle and got a free recycling machine, then went to sleep for the night. Day 88, I got a recipe from Gus and started a new batch of cranberry wine. I did my normal tasks of feeding the animals, stocking the crab pots, and donating to the museum. I went to the desert to give Sandy an iron bar since she requested it. I like to think that she talked to Emily over the phone about it and Emily made a post on the board to help her out. I tried to fish in the secret pond, but I didn't have enough fishing skill, so I settled for the normal pond outside the caverns. I gave Gus some more eggs and handed out gifts for the next few hours, then I went to sleep with level 9 fishing skill. Day 89, my cat hunted and killed a rock for me, then a new duckling hatched, and I named it Pubs. I started a new row of kegs and went to Clint's for geodes and museum donations. I spent some time in the mountains chopping down trees and recovering some items I lost in the caverns. Then I caved and bought a mid-level sword because it was at least better than the woodland staff. I gave out some gifts, found some secret notes, and went foraging in the secret woods. So many secrets in this town. Day 90, I got some letters in the mail and headed for the quarry mines. I battled my way through with my mid-level sword and came out with the golden scythe. It looks iridium because of mods, but it's just a regular gold one. 
I nearly died on my way out, but I survived and gave Gus a bunch more eggs for his omelette. I gathered some copper from the mines and found another secret note about being a maple syrup dealer. Then I went around looking for more secrets and was devastated that I couldn't find whatever was behind the community center for some reason. I made some espresso for the morning and went to sleep. The next morning, Pierre stopped by to shill his products. It's way too early for this, Pierre. Get off my property. I fed my animals and brought some maple syrup to the secret woods to find a bear who clearly has a substance abuse problem. I gave him the syrup though because I like to enable people and went to give the wizard and his mistress their bi-weekly gifts. I donated to the museum, dropped off more eggs for Gus, and gave out more gifts to the townsfolk. Elliot was standing in the way of my crab pot so I accidentally chucked some fish bait at him and he was very upset about it. I visited Linus in the bathhouse, made some more coffee, and put up an adorable manatee painting I found in my kitchen before I went to sleep for the night. Day 92 was the big day where I finally got the key from the curator to open up the sewer. I desperately tried to scrounge up enough fall forageables for a bundle that had been torturing me for weeks. Then I tended to my animals and headed to the fishing competition in the woods. Clint was being a freak as usual because Emily dared to exist near him and help his pitiful snowman. Then it was time to stress out over the fishing competition and hope and beg that the RNG would be nice to me. I ended up winning with only five fish, but it was close. I got a cool new hat and some tackle and went home sweaty and cold at the same time. In the morning, I did some farm chores and headed straight to the sewers to unlock the gate and meet my beloved Krobus. I normally marry Shane or Sebastian because I'm a hopeless emo, but Krobus is my platonic soulmate and I've been saving all my love and attention just for him. He sells the rest of the fairy weapons too, which is a huge bonus. I fished up my first legendary fish from the murky poo water and also got a single piece of bait with him. I spent some time at the beach selling my crab pot spoils and then gave out more gifts around town. Haley harassed me over not wearing name brand clothes like a mean girl, but I ignored her and finished up the omelet quest from Gus and made a cool three grand. I made a fish tank for my mutant sewer fish and processed more geodes, then I upgraded my hoe for the first time. I spent the rest of the night fishing and went to sleep. Winter 10 is Sebi's birthday and I woke up to some gifts and recipes in the mail. I put my mini fridge next to my regular fridge and realized that I could choose different skins for some of the furniture in my house. I tended to my animals and gave Demetrius a sea cucumber I caught last night, then gifted Krobus a full diamond because my boy has expensive taste. I bought a star drop from him because I'm filthy rich and can afford it, and as usual, the taste reminded me of glitter. I spent some time in the secret woods and gave Sebi his present, then went to sleep. Day 95, I fed my animals, gave Pam a beer before work, and picked up my new copper hoe. I gave out more gifts and dropped by the quarry for some gems, then I got the giant omelette cutscene at the bar. It took Willie a minute to figure out if he liked it or not, but he eventually said it was good, which is perfect because if he didn't, I would have had to kill him and feed him to my ducks. Vincent didn't like his gift, so I threatened his life. Then I visited Sebi while he was working and dropped off hardwood at Robin's. I spent the night drinking at the bar with Elliot and was once again tempted to say something out of pocket, but I didn't want to ruin the vibe, so I made a normal toast and we had a good time. I gave Emily her present from Clint and claimed all the credit for it because he sucks, then gave out a couple more gifts in and out of the bar before going to bed. The next morning, Leah visited me and gave me a sculpture she'd been working on, and when I put it in my house, it transformed into a gnome for some reason. I decided to ignore that and feed my animals for the day. Then I went to Marnie's to buy my first cow and named it, uh, cow. I checked the traveling cart and finished a side quest for the wizard. Then I forgot I already gave Elliot two gifts this week and stood there like an idiot with a duck feather in my hand. Dropped off some more hardwood at Robin's and checked some pricing for house upgrades. 
then headed to the mines to kill bugs and gather secret notes. I used the bug meat to make a bunch of wild bait for fishing, then went to sleep. Day 97 I tended to my greenhouse and my animals, then dropped off the rest of the hardwood at Robin's and got my reward. I did a little monster slaying in the mines, sold loot at the Adventurer's Guild, and did a side quest for the wizard. I opened up a bunch of secret notes and then went to sleep for the night. Big Boy brought me an amethyst in the morning, so I gave him some extra love before I got my mail and did the rest of my farm chores. My starfruit came in, so I started a big batch of starfruit wine, then planted more fall seeds, desperately trying to gather enough plums for the community center. I stopped by the traveling cart and the wizard, as usual, then went to Marnie's and got the secret barn cutscene with Shane, unlocking blue chickens for sale. I'm a sucker for Shane hugging a chicken. I bought my first blue chicken and appropriately named it Blubs. And then in a shocking moment of self-sacrifice, I actually went to Lewis's house to return his crusty purple shorts. The monetary reward is the same amount of star tokens he gave me at the fall festival, which is a fun touch. I talked to Abigail about art for a while, which was fun, then gave her mom her bi-weekly gift. I remembered I had crab pots at the beach, so I emptied those and sold my stuff at Willie's, and it was technically a new week, so I could give Elliot his duck feather. He gave out more gifts around town, and headed to the desert to give Sandy flowers and buy a bunch of beet seeds. I popped down into the caverns to see if I can get any loot, and almost died again, then got a new sword, which wasn't any better than the one I already had. I went home to plant my beets, and went to sleep later than usual. I had a hard time choosing which perk I wanted for level 10 farming, but I eventually chose Coopmaster since I love birds so much. Winter 15 is the first day of the night market, so I'll have to stay up later to make sure I can take part. I harvested more fall seeds and despaired over the lack of plums, then planted a bunch more seeds to try again. I got a secret note and visited the wizard again, then spent some time in the woods foraging and chopping down trees. I gave out some flowers around town and went to the desert to give Sandy hers, and I did a little desert fishing before going home and using my warp tome to go to the beach for the night market. I got some delicious coffee and picked up a few items at the stalls, then saw the mermaid show and went on a deep sea fishing mission. It was getting late, so I warped home and went to sleep a little before 1am. It's finally day 100, but we're not done yet. I still need to finish up the year. I did my farm chores and went to Robin's to see the new bed she carved. The scene with Demetrius complaining that it wasn't an efficient use of wood or whatever annoys me every time and makes me wish I had installed a mod to break them up and marry Robin myself. At least then she would be appreciated. I visited Sebi in the basement and spent the rest of the day mining and getting things to donate to the museum. It was late enough for the night market to start, so I spent some time there buying art for my walls and unlocking the secret mermaid puzzle. I bought a bunch of stone parrots for my farm because I have a problem, then gave the dwarf a visit since I finally had the dwarvish translation guide. I bought the rare crow from him and went to sleep. The next morning Clint sent me a letter asking for help with a side quest, then I spent my morning placing parrot statues around my farm and tending to the animals. I gave out some gifts around town and got my favorite cutscene of all time at Emily's. Everybody shut up and watch her go! She's the best character in this game and nobody could tell me otherwise. Anyway, I gave up more gifts and processed geodes at Clint's, and I gave him the iron bar he asked for and got 500 bucks for it. I gave the wizard a present on his birthday, which made him super happy, and I donated more stuff to the museum and killed a bunch of dust sprites in the mines. I found Sabby working on his motorcycle, we chatted for a bit, then I did my usual rounds at the bar and got caught digging through trash cans by Alex. 
I pretended nothing happened and headed to the night market for coffee and deep sea fishing, then went to sleep for the night. In the morning, I got some letters, which included extra wood from Robin, and my secret friend for the Feast of the Winter Star, which was Sam. I tended my animals, visited Harvey at the clinic, and helped Haley open up a pickle jar because her weak little arm muscles can't compare to my beefy farm muscles. Also, she said it was too cold to get out of bed after eating pickles right from the jar, and I find that very relatable. The ancient factions were warring in the sewers again, so I had to break up their fight before my precious Krobus got hurt. I finally got enough money to afford a better fairy weapon, so I bought the fairy tome from Krobus. I immediately went to the caverns to try it out, and died just as quickly. I swear I've never died as many times as I have in this one playthrough. I lost my fairy tome, so I had to pay Marlin to get it back for me, then I went to sleep sobbing and bleeding. I got my fairy tome back in the mail in the morning and started doing my farm chores. I made some pickles and mayonnaise to sell and got my first bottles of cow's milk. Before I died yesterday, I used my pearl to trade for a cool new bed, so I placed that in my house and headed to the mines to spend my day fighting bugs and gathering notes. I visited the dwarf and got a hard hat as a reward for killing monsters, then I made a bunch more wild bait and went to sleep. The footage of me sleeping through the night is missing, so we're gonna ignore that and get right into day 104, which is Evelyn's birthday. I made wine, harvested greenhouse crops, and fed my animals. I was running low on hay, so I cut some more of the grass on the farm to fill up the silo. After that, I filled my pockets with bombs and spent the rest of the day in the caverns. I'm missing some more footage here, but for once, I didn't die, and I actually made it home in one piece, I promise. In the morning, I learned to make pumpkin pie from the Food Network and got a request for more hardwood in the mail. I once again despaired at the lack of plums in my greenhouse and fed my animals for the day. I quickly ran and gave Robin the wood she asked for and went to the community center to scream and cry over the fact that all I needed was a couple of chocolate chip cookies and 10 plums to finish all the bundles. I tried to distract myself from my anguish by running around town giving out flowers and pasta. At the end of the day, I collected a whole batch of pickled veggies to sell and went to bed. The good news is that the footage isn't missing this time. Day 106, I cried in the greenhouse again and went into town in emotional wreck. Harvey was giving George a prostate exam right in his own living room, which was awkward, but I ignored them and gave his wife some flowers. I gave out flowers around town and visited my beautiful Krobus to give him a diamond. Then I accepted a community request to clean up the garbage in the rivers and lakes around town. I harvested my crab pots and spent the rest of my day fishing in the underground lava lake. Then I put all the trash I fished up in the dumpster behind the train station. I fished a little more in the mountain lake and went to sleep. The 23rd of winter is Leah's birthday, so I decided to celebrate by making even more kegs and brewing some more homemade hooch. I also planted a stupid amount of fall seeds to try and get some plums before the end of the month. The animals were fine as usual, so I went into town and somehow miraculously found chocolate chip cookies in a trash can. I gave out some more flowers and finished the second to last community bundle, which gave me a couple batteries as a reward. I went to Clint's to process geodes and gave Krobus another diamond. I sold some beach forgeables to Willie and bought more bait, then I used my expansive wealth to make some deluxe sprinklers for the greenhouse. I gave Leah a salad for her birthday, which is super depressing, but she seemed happy, so it's fine. I gave out some more gifts around town and then went to sleep. Day 108, I woke up to a newly upgraded house, so I moved some of my furniture for ease of access and went outside to get my mail. I went to the greenhouse and gathered some tea leaves, then made a new batch of green tea in my kegs. I fed my animals as usual and went to the desert to visit Sandy and buy a ton of starfruit seeds. I went back home to visit Krobus and harvest my crab pots, then planted all my starfruit seeds at home and went to sleep. It was the day of the Feast of the Winter Star, and I spent my morning tending to the crops in my greenhouse and brewing a bunch of green tea. I said hi to my animals and headed to the town square for the festivities. I bought the final seasonal banner and gave Sam a frozen pizza for his gift. To my utter shock and horror, Clint was my secret friend this year. I was uncomfortable at first, but I quickly changed my tune when I realized he gave me an entire iridium bar for my gift. 
Way to actually be useful, Clint. The next day was his birthday, and I was so happy about his gift that I decided not to ignore it this year. I cried over my lack of plums once again and dropped off my hoe to upgrade at Clint's. I gave out some gifts around town, and then all the goodwill I felt toward Clint melted away as he got all sweaty and red-faced filming a commercial with Emily for a Joja Cola competition. Go touch grass, Clint, I swear. It was a day of cutscenes, I guess, so I got to see Sam getting yelled at for skateboarding on other people's property, then I fished up an albacore at the beach to give to Gus. Yet another cutscene was triggered at the bar, and Gus was depressed over not being able to pay his bills because Pam refuses to pay her bar tab despite drinking the whole place dry every night. I beat some sense into her and went to sleep. Day 111, I got some recipes and coconuts in the mail and did my normal farm chores. I harassed Clint over my hoe and saw Linus taking an ice bath in the mountain lake. He wasn't even shivering, what a chad. I spent some time in the quarry and the mines, then gave the dwarf a gift before smelting a bunch of ore I found at home and went to bed. It's the final day of the year and I woke up to Gus stirring a pot of marinara sauce on my front step. His cooking methods might be suspect, but he gave me a free jukebox for my farm, so I couldn't complain. I collected even more plums from my garden, but it wasn't enough to finish the last item for the last bundle. I didn't want to end my day with a failure, so I psyched myself up, filled my pockets with supplies, and headed to the caverns one last time. So sit back and relax, and watch my final descent into madness. <laughs> That's right, you saw what happened. I died again. On the final day of my playthrough, not only did I fail to complete the community center because I was missing a single item, but I also got the snot beaten out of me and I had to get carried home on a stretcher. The only silver lining in this whole thing was that I at least leveled up my mining and combat skills. First day of spring means that's the end of the year and the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed playing this year with all my fun little mods and cosmetics, and even though the editing on this video was a nightmare, I'm glad I was able to complete such a big project. If you want to see more from me, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As usual, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!